Hi, I'm Joe Lenton and welcome to this original art photography uh, image processing video and in this tutorial here we're going to look at adding light leaks and other color overlays to images to portrait photos to, just to change the the feel of them so I'll just show you a few quick uh, demo ones that I've done beforehand so there's this image here where you can see I've warmed up the right hand side cooled down the left um, and that's given that kind of sort of yellowy orangey red sort of effect that you often see in you know, the old vintage light leak kind of effects and um, you know yes you can buy these effects as overlays or you can learn how to create them and do similar sort of things yourself this particular one here was shot from very low down on the ground through foliage so it did have some haze in it already but it wasn't quite what I was after so I changed it and I also added in a little bit of warmer color around here just to make that a bit more interesting and in this third example here, uh, all I've done is tone the image a little bit so it's slightly sort of soft, peachy, pinky sort of colour. And then this back bit here behind her was woodland, so it was actually quite dark, even though the sun is coming across from the left there. So I added a little bit of a sort of a leak there to um, just brighten that side of the image up a little bit. And so it made a bit more sense with the light on the side of her face, having a bit of a light up here as well. Okay, so there's just a few uh, basic examples and we're going to have a look at a few different ways of doing this. Now if you're doing a light leak you really want to bear in mind <clears throat> which direction the light is coming from in your image. So in this image you don't really want to be doing one over to the left here because the sun is clearly coming from right to left. Look at her face, left is in shadow, the right is light highlights down her hair and so on so <clears throat> the sun is really going to be up in the top right hand corner here so if you want it to be a realistic sort of light leak as if the, or flare or something as if the sun is streaking across your lens it needs to come from sort of top right across the image that way otherwise it just won't look natural of course, if you want to create an unnatural effect, that's not a problem. It's all up to you what your artistic vision is for it, of course. So in this particular one, I'm going to show you, first of all, how you could do something using Lightroom. And then we'll go into Photoshop and look at a few more different effects. So we're going to use the graduated filter. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the effect that I've got here, I'll just show you it, and then I'll break it down through the sliders. So if I drag that across... So coming from that top left, coming down to sort of over here a little bit, something like that. Okay, so you can see roughly what it's doing there. Just turn it off and get a better, bit of a better view. Uh, enhancing the light coming in from that corner there, and it's got a slightly more sort of peachy, pinky sort of a glow to it. Let me just show you what's going on with that. So if I come back in and click on that pin, you can see the temperature I've taken from, that's the sort of the normal temperature of it, and I've warmed that up a bit. Uh, the tint I've taken from being a neutral and added in some magenta, so that's what helps give it that sort of pinky peachy colour. Um, I've added a bit of exposure because we want to brighten it up as if sunlight is coming across. I've also taken the contrast down um, so that it looks like a bit of a sort of a haze on there. Um, you can see it's not quite so effective if you have high contrast there. That sort of lower contrast helps with that. Similarly with the, with the clarity, that helps to soften things again. And the dehaze slider I've even knocked back a bit because um, there it is sort of before the dehaze and there it is taking it down. You'll see obviously the dehaze is very good for getting rid of unwanted fog and so on. But if you take it, the slider to the left, it actually adds in a little bit of um, haze to your image. So with all of those things there combined like that, that's how we get that sort of effect. And if you want to vary your colour of that, you can use your colour temperature sliders to warm it up even more if you want to. Uh, if it's too pink, just take that back a little bit. Um, so so you can make that a little bit more of a sort of orangey yellowy sort of colour. Uh, now you could um, just do the one and you could put, if you wanted it to be a bit brighter, pull the, that exposure up a little bit, but it, it, the transition risks being a little bit just too harsh there. So what you can do is actually layer them up so you can keep your, your settings the same and then you can add in another light layer there. The only thing that you might want to get rid of when you're doing another one is the dehaze because too much of that, that haze really doesn't look quite right. So you may need to just tweak your contrast or your haze settings a little bit if you're adding another one. And then you can add a couple more just right in the corner there just to brighten that up. 
And you can see how you can start to sort of build up that, that sort of an effect um, for your image. You can brighten up that corner there and uh, make it look as though some light is spilling across it. Now, this is not quite as good as the sort of effect you can achieve in Photoshop, but it's an interesting idea for colouring an image. Also, I think, generally speaking, you want to go a bit over your subject, because at the moment here we've got a big gap which doesn't look too great having that, that kind of a gap next to them there. You, you want your, your light leaks to um, overlap them a little bit, if at all possible. So let me just take that uh, back, and we'll just do that again quickly with our um, graduated filters. So if I start one about here and bring that over her there, and then we'll have another one here, one in there, one there, and then we'll just um, quickly, with those, we'll just quickly alter the the dehaze on those because we don't want too much of that haze coming through. Like that, again with that one, just to get rid of that. So that starts to bring it in a little bit more over our over our subject. Uh, so we haven't got that kind of outline that we had before. Um, sometimes you might want to recrop after you've done something like this. So you may decide that you're going to, you don't want quite as much of that in. You just want it a little bit on the edge, crop it in a little bit closer like that. Now you're a bit restricted in terms of what colours and that you can um, add and play with in in Lightroom. So um, Photoshop generally tends to be a little bit easier to work with. So if we go back and then we're going to take that image into Photoshop, so edit in Photoshop, and it's so much easier to have more control over things here because we can work at everything on layers and uh, adjust it individually. We can add different colors much more easily because we're not so reliant on just a couple of different sliders. So here's our basic background. So let's say again we want to do some kind of a light leak from the right hand side there. Stick in a new layer, go to your brush tool and um, for this we're going to pick sort of yellows, oranges and red sort of colors. So here I've got a uh, that's slightly on the greeny side. Let's just bring that down a bit. So let's go with a fairly sort of bright uh, yellowy colour. And for that, we'll just paint a bit of that around here, like so. Uh, maybe a little bit more there. Then we'll go for an orange. We'll go for a fairly bright sort of orangey colour. We'll paint a bit of that around here and there as well. Uh, and then we'll go for a red you ready sort of color stick a couple of splodges of that in here and there now at the moment of course you can see where my brush has been it's a bit obvious my brush was at 40 percent opacity and 20 percent flow so it's not you know putting down thick color but it does still look um, you can see those ones in particular that still look quite obvious so the thing to do then is to apply a filter to that layer go to filter blur gaussian blur and then you'll see that if you don't have much of a filter you can still see the lines between things if you if you add the a lot more blur to it then everything starts to amalgamate and it just looks a lot more like patches of colour, like so. You can, of course, also change your blend mode. So you could go for something like screen, for example, which would, um, light just adds a sort of lightning effect, or you can use the light and blend mode. Normal blend mode and light and blend mode in this instance are very similar, but normal to screen is a little bit more subtle, perhaps, like that. Um, you could duplicate your layer, Control J, and that will make it that bit more intense if you wanted to do that. Uh, and then you can, of course, just play with your opacity to dial that in or out. Okay. Um, if you haven't got it exactly where you want it, um, so it, like here we've got this um, area above her head where it's not really caught, so it should really be coming right up to the edge of her hair there. We can click on one of our layers and Control or Command T brings up the transform dialog and then if we click in the left hand corner and hold shift and drag we can transform the shape of that a little bit so that it starts to overlap the hair a bit more and then again with this one as well, Control or Command T and we can stretch that sort of thing over a bit and so so that we can lose that uh, empty space right next to her there and um, 
if you want a particular color to be a little bit more prominent instead of just duplicating it like that then we could say okay I'd rather have a bit more sort of red I want some more red in this sort of area here again we'll probably just run that Gaussian blur filter on it just to soften the edges even more and change that blend mode to screen you'll lose a lot of that just to the lighter one that's quite nice a little bit of a, a more subtle effect there and then again of course you can dial it in and out with your opacity so you can pick exactly what colors you want to use exactly where you want them to be soften them as much as you want them to, as you want to uh, and play around with all of that so that you can create that kind of an effect of the light spilling in across the image now I'm just going to get rid of that layer there because um, when you've got light coming across like that um, you often get a bit of a flare on your camera and some of the really good lenses of course don't give you lens flare they're very resistant to it um, so if you want to create a kind of a fake lens flare on there one way of doing that and there are a few different ways of doing it um, if you want to have a bit more control of it you might not want to do it directly onto um, a copy of the image itself because it's you know, that's the only thing with lens flare is it does need some you can't just work on a blank layer it needs something to make uh, make the flare on if you create a new layer and you press um, shift delete and fill it with black uh, then go to filter uh, where is it uh, render and then lens flare we could say right let's have a really sort of bright lens flare something like that okay so there's our there's our lens flare but we don't want to go in that way clearly we want to go from the right hand side so control T uh, right mouse button flip horizontal okay um, and now we can change the blend mode of that for example to lighten then uh, V for your move tool or oh, it's that one up the top corner there and we can drag that up to up to the corner like so and we can drag that out so that that's appearing across our image like that. Now clearly at the moment that's a little bit too bright so take your opacity and you can dial that down a little bit. You may want to experiment with different blend modes on there so lighten actually again is starting to look a little bit better um, than what we had there I think. Uh, you're going to get some of your uh, some of these sort of colors uh, here the magenta type colors from that um, lens flare as well so that, that's why I took those out earlier uh, and of course you can still keep on changing this if that's still not quite right for you control T to transform it and you know we can make this bigger smaller it all depends what sort of an effect we're we're after we can move it around a bit still if we want to so and um, the only issue that you start to get with it sometimes is these sort of edges over here where it's overlapping where you don't want it and there are a few different ways you can deal with that you can mask it you could um, use your uh, blend if sliders to take it out of that sort of area a little bit the only thing being of course that that will take it out of uh, other areas as well and it doesn't get rid of it in these sort of areas so you'd still have to um, mask that out with a brush okay um, but the other advantage you've got of having this sort of thing as a layer is of course you can change the hue the saturation of the of it so you can make that slightly less saturated you can make it more saturated so it shows up or you can um, adjust the uh, the contrast just for your flare so you can add in a curves layer clip it to that level and then you can then play around with the contrast as it relates to that particular uh, oops no it shouldn't be clicked down to that one sorry if I just put all of these three here into a group and then we can unclip that one there there we go okay so there's a little group with our with our lens flare in it and at the moment there that's probably a little bit too intense um, so again you can, once you've got your group in there you can then dial that in or out and, just gives you uh, a way of creating some interesting effects and in many different ways that you can play around with it to uh, to create whatever you're after and of course similarly you can do other other colors other effects on the on the other side over here you could add in um, a layer 
we go for another blank layer. Uh, we could add in some sort of darker color over here to darken this off with. So let's have a look what we want. We could go for um, for something like a sort of a dark green, for example. See what that looks like. Maybe not dark enough, but it's okay. Uh, we could go for a bit of a dark blue color. there and again similar to with the other one we may decide that we want to uh, give that a little bit of a little bit of a blur and of course we can then also add curves or other adjustments to it and play around with it something like that so you've got a little bit of a darkening on the left hand side some brightening on the right hand side I would still be looking, of course, to um, refine that a little bit further. That's not quite there yet, but you get the idea of how you can add in any colour you like to lighten or darken something and how you can use that lens flare in there. So let's just um, come out of that one and we'll go back into Lightroom and we'll just grab this one here. And with this, again, we'll have a very quick look at how we could try this in Lightroom. So let's grab our graduated filter, and you can see the sun is on the edge of her here. So we've got that very dark woodland behind her. Um, so let's sort of give a suggestion of the sun coming in here. So we'll drag that down like that, drag that onto her a little bit. bit more like that, maybe. Something along those sorts of lines. Now, again, you can see we're not actually uh, quite coming all the way over onto her with that, so we may want to bring that a little bit further. Like that. Depending on the sort of effect that we're after. Uh, there's a lot of haze there, again, because we've added the, the, that, that haze in each time, so we might want to just get rid of a bit of that. So th there's a sort of a, a pinky kind of haze that we've created in that corner. Now next to this black on the right hand side that clearly looks really weird so you might want to recrop your image so say something like that or possibly even in a little bit uh, closer and that way it, uh, it it work blends in a little bit better. Then of course you can go on to retouch um, other areas of your of your image that you want to. You can play around with um, clarity and that um, separately or edit your image as you normally would. It's just a, an interesting possibility for adding in a little bit of an effect in there. Um, now if I just take that um, back to how that was, so we just go back to there with that one and we'll pop that one into Photoshop as well. And we'll do similar sort of an idea with this. Now, okay, so there's our new layer. Now we're going to use the paintbrush again. Now in terms of colour here, we might want to choose something that's got a sort of a bit of a peachy colour so that the tones and that will blend well together. Well, actually some of her skin is already that kind of colour. So let's um, sample something from her skin and then we can paint a bit of that in. We can sample from a few different areas where it's brighter or darker and uh, get a few different uh, tones so they're not all exactly the same something like that uh, filter and you can do blur Gaussian blur and see how well that works and again we may want to change the uh, blend mode there to something like screen or lighten probably screen works best there and we may need to just stretch it a little bit so it comes out far enough, something like that. And similarly with the other one, we may want to alter our oops, Daisy. We may want to alter our crop so that it's a bit tighter on that area, like so. So just a very quick um, sample there. And similarly, of course, you could add in um, another lens flare if you want. So we can, you know, we can we can just take that down, make that a little bit less intense. If there's too much of it on the face, just add in a layer mask, um, get your brush to black and just um, brush some of that out of the face like so. So very straightforward to, to alter that. Add in a new layer, 
fill with black um, filter render lens flare and we'll go with uh, let's go with something like that. There we go. Screen V for your move tool, or click on this little one up the top here, and you can move that up there. And of course, you can resize it a bit if you want to as well. You want to bring it right out into the image, and that's up to you. Um, just bear in mind that when you do that, you're going to end up with the uh, the rings actually intruding into your image a fair old bit if you do that. So you may then need to play around with your other settings a little bit more. Okay, so clearly these fake lens flares don't look exactly the same as a, as a proper one. So you know, if you want to get good lens flare on there, you may want to experiment with a cheaper lens that doesn't have the flare, flare resistant coating because uh, they're easier to make them flare. But anyway, that gives you a way in which you can add uh, color, add sort of light leaks flares to your images just to alter the mood a little bit and um, change something around to soften it. It works very well with these sort of portraits of women because it, it you can add in soft colour. Um, it's a little bit like adding in an extra layer of bokeh I suppose but um, it's a nice way of just uh, blending as well the colours across the image so you get good harmony between things. If your background is not as harmonious as you'd like it to be with your foreground uh, then putting some of this color in here like this can actually just sort of help blend things a bit more and uh, that way you're looking at um, a more pleasing image in the end still need to do full retouching on it of course as it as it is there at the moment it's not perfect by any means but you can see the effect that that adds in there and the creative possibilities that that opens up for you so just to give you a quick reminder again of the various um, things we've uh, we've looked at so you can have something just coming in uh, with the sort of the orangey red color mix adding into that that direction of the travel of the light with perhaps some blue in the shadows it's a kind of a vintagey type feel to something um, similarly here you can use it to overlay uh, when you've already got some um, uh, soft focused areas in your image like this and here you can use it to add in a light source where your, your shadows are just that little bit too dark in the background just remember to make sure you know um, your direction of light and to go with that because uh, going against it just does tend to look a little bit strange but do have a play with that as you can see it's pretty easy to do easier to control in Photoshop much more possibilities there um, so dive in grab one of your um, portraits and have a play. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Joe Lenton from Original Art Photography.